Hey guys, welcome to Slam Chance Outdoors. So we're doing a little uh, preseason talk. We're just going to kind of talk about maybe previous hunts, kind of our game plans for the year. So hope you guys enjoy. I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out. We're just going to kind of wing it. We don't have a script or anything. Uh, it's real life stuff. <laughs> it's just a nice evening. We're all out here enjoying a, a, a beer. I got got a cigar. We got our Tiki torch is going to keep mosquitoes away from us, but hope you guys can kind of enjoy our little impromptu discussion that we have. We got shows lined up all the way through October, as of now, without even hunting yet. Yeah. I mean, ain't no telling what could even come from season. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a lot more. So I was like, man, it's going to be. It it's could be, be a epic season. I'd say it could be one of my best seasons I've ever had. Not me alone, but my family. Of the deer, the quality of deer that I could actually get this year, but just what I got going. Yeah, I mean, you've got a bunch of pictures of some really nice, <laughs> nice bucks coming up. <laughs> I mean, I've had always, always had it like that, but I've always been well, uh, well, I just not so much posting them. Well, I just try to be not so picky. Now I'm going to be picky for myself, but for my wife and my son, uh, mm -mm, we're going to shoot them once. I think we guys, we stand a really good chance of getting at least a decent one this year. Was well, not saying that I have it, but this year could be great. Yeah, the way with, that's what it's what shape, going. shaping up over great there. Great here. My property as well. I mean, you've got a ton of pictures that's of so bucks. I mean, it's it's here, here on the run. Daytime, a, lot, a lot of daytime too. Exactly. With all uh, the does early too. At some of these other places that that y'all have, like yeah. November could be like. Yeah. A great November. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it it goes crazy over there. Uh, once once the ro rut hits, middle of the rut, it just bucks come out of nowhere. Like last year, uh, we did, we got one or two pictures of bucks that were just like, okay, those are some all right bucks. I would I wouldn't gonna take them if she saw them. You know, my wife saw them, like she would take them. But um, and then I was like, man, there's no bucks on this property. <laughs> I was kind of getting disappointed, you know, first year having it, and then. Come middle of November, and I, I had five, six, seven different bucks that I was like, okay, and they're you know one one thirty plus, yeah, that were nice bucks, and I'm like, okay, and then it just if we saw them, they were too far out, wrong time of the year, and they didn't have a rifle, so it's wrong time of year, you know, wrong season, but so many, and this year it, we're seeing them way earlier, like all the bucks I've been seeing you guys showing you guys some of the trail oh, yeah. cam pictures, we didn't have that last year. Like this early, we were. It was does, doe mageddon over there. I mean, it was crazy, <laughs> but uh, there there wasn't any bucks in it. And then well, was you over there feeding this early? Yeah. Did uh, you start the same time? I didn't say start the same time because now I've had it. You know, I had it all that year. But the thing about it is, last year, I only got to start really changing things up because the old leasers had to get off of it. And by the time they got off of it, it was only a month or two before season. But even with that, they had been feeding. I don't know what they were doing. What I'm saying is they were feeding. Um, they weren't feeding corn. They weren't. Did they have feeding, feeders? Uh, no, they didn't have feeders either. So that's why I was like, maybe that's the difference because I don't have feeders. I, I well, I, I have one in one spot. Uh, all the rest is just on the ground. This corn on the ground's good, but it only lasts so long. Exactly. I had to go in there. I noticed a lot of difference between what my dad does have feeders up year round. Yeah. You yeah. come to feed year round. You don't ever stop feeding. Yeah. And I do. I don't you don't spend you'll money on year. corn all year I, long. I, I, I do, I spend so much. To, to fill up. I don't feed year round. Yeah. But I, I do, but I don't just do corn like if I don't have the money to go and get, you know, a ton of corn or mm -hmm. whatever we'll do other stuff. We'll get them little uh them blocks from Walmart. They're they're cheap. And yeah. you can go and get them real easy. Them apple blocks. Them deer out there love well, minerals and they're, like they're, salt and stuff is real affordable to get, yeah. and it works. And Those uh, coming, trophy no rocks. What. We use some trophy rocks. I mean, that, that limits you. Like, you could just set a rock somewhere and put a camera on it, and there's going to be deer activity, yeah. and not even go there. Like, you could let the camera go all season and not yeah. even check it. Check it at the end of the season, I bet you got some pretty cool pictures. Yeah. We just have off 40, of minerals four, alone. We have that 160 acres, and it's 120, and there's a lease road, and there's 40 on the other side. That 40 is so thick, it's ridiculous, and we don't go on it. Like at all. I mean, we we went, you know, 
shed hunting at the, after season last year and everything. But other than that, like we didn't we didn't touch it last year. And but when I went on shed hunting, I mean, it, there's rubs everywhere, and it's bedding everywhere, and it's just it's overtaken. And I I actually take that back. I went in it once, uh, middle of the rut. I went over there, and it was rifle season, and I went over there. And I just messed around and I blind blue and next thing I knew I hear something walking. I'm thinking squirrel. And then three, four, five does come just run. I mean barreling through that stuff, breaking everything in their way, you know? And then uh next thing you know through the trees I can see I just see a rack like this. Oh, that's awesome. And I thought I was gonna give a nice buck, be done for the day because I hadn't been out there long. I was just like, oh I'm gonna mess around and go sit behind beside this tree and then uh, I'm getting ready to shoot this thing, waiting for him to take a couple steps, you know, and pro way over here, that it's that's the thing, it's so thick, way over here behind me, a different group of does started blowing and got, blew me out. He took off, the mother doe took off, they broke everything in their path, and it was over with. But it, that's the problem I have over there, is if I get into some thick areas, if I do, do any just, you know, walking old times sitting in the trees, I get, I, I'm, I don't get, there's so many deer, I'll be focusing on these and there's some back here get me, so. Yeah, well that. You stand that stance on every spot you're yeah, no really matter you what, do. depending on what you're in, the ground blind or tree stand. I get a lot more activity being in the ground blind because it does cover most of your scent, the wind or whatnot. Helps a lot. You can't cover every wind direction, no matter what you, I don't care what you wear. Yeah. Deer gonna smell you, they smell you. So when you obviously hunt those type of places where you got multiple deer, you don't never know where they're gonna come from. You might move over or something. Adjust a little bit, because deer, sometimes in those places, they do the same thing. They do the same thing every day. Yeah. Yep. So you can make a small adjustment and it might be killer. Sometimes it might not be. It might be best just to leave it alone. And classify that type of area like a sanctuary. You don't go in there at all to the end of the season. Like or sheds or whatnot. Just leave it. Mm -hmm. Don't even hunt. There's a spot in the middle of that 120 side that we just we don't go in. We can't go in. It's so thick. There's, there's trails into it. If we wanted to hands and knees crawl, we could. But it's so thick and tall. I mean, it's 10, 15 yeah. foot tall. Both hunting those places is impossible anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not getting a shot through that, yeah. and you can't see very far. So. I like to set up in places where you can see good ways. Yeah. It gives you time to get ready. The deer's coming. I mean, some places you can't have it. I mean, one of my places is sometimes when you see the deer, I mean, they're already they're already out range. Range. You ain't they're seeing. Not, yeah. They're not. You're not seeing them. They're, you see them right when they come in. You're shooting them. I mean, they're, you're not watching. Them <coughs> you got yards that few away. seconds of getting a shot off. Yeah, you got to. You got to be ready for it. That type of thing, but. I mean, sometimes it works out, at having, that's when you have multiple people hunting bigger pieces of land. Like most of my land is small okay. tracts of land. So you don't have that many eyes. You just have, based off of what you're feeding one spot, got the deer coming. If you have 160, 200 acres yeah. to hunt, hey, you got deer coming across there. You don't see them that corn, corn pile you might have. Yeah, we have so deer on one, like one side guys, that we don't see on the other. In the woods, different places, you want to pick up everything you got. I mean, because there's some deer I believe won't come to that. Yeah. You might be hunting to see a deer. I've never had a picture of that deer. That's because he knows better than to come to that. We have the bottoms because you know you guys know where my property is at. And the big hills. And that bottoms. We, we I I hunt that maybe three times last year. I hunted it maybe three times. And the one the two times I did, I seen one of the biggest bucks I've ever seen. And he's over by the road. I don't want to shoot near the road because my property goes to the edge of the road and he beds about 20 yards off the dirt road so I can't come off the dirt road in there because he's bedded right there and he runs off and I can't come from the other side because when he gets up every time he walks this way he crosses a property line and there's a fence a gate he jumps it crosses the road and he's gone he don't I we got a few pictures up at the top of the hill of him mostly night and then he's just, he's, his routine is just crossing that road. Something over there takes his attention. Yes, it's, e it's easier. He's not having to go up the hill. He's, oh, yeah. he's, he's old. He's an old buck. 
but he he don't want to come up that hill. He just goes it's straight on the across the road. It's straight land. It's flat prairie farmland over there. You got permission yeah. up to the gate? Up to the gate, yes. But that gate from where he's bedding and he's bedding there almost consistently is probably only thirty yards. So it's getting in there is basically impossible. No, if he's a big, if he's a big mature buck, and you can catch him, you can catch him in the rut. Yeah, you can that, that's sit. when we get him up at the top of the hill. You can always sit back, you know, a hundred yards from where you know he's going to be, and then when you see him, you snort wheeze him. And yeah. if he's in the mood, he's going to come over and see who's in his area. You know, I, I don't know how old he is, but he always has a. Once the rut comes, he stay, he stays with this little bitty buck, even all through the rut, from the beginning to the end, he's with this little buck. And he uses him as a decoy. He sends him in, and well, he did. He did. Uh, I take that back. He did last year. That's actually the three-point buck my wife got. Uh, I told her I was like, you know, this is the buck I got that comes in ten minutes before we called him Pops. Before Pops comes in, really? I'm like, yeah. Like, if you'd have waited ten minutes, but she, she it was her first buck, so I couldn't blame her. No. Couldn't blame her at all, but. See, that's like our 80 acres that we hunt. <clears throat> when I shot that 12 point, he was hanging out with that big 14 point that my dad shot, you know. And I shot him because he had a drop time. I wanted a drop time buck. And, you know, in gun season, my dad shoots that 14 point that scored a little over 150. But in muzzleloading season, my brother shoots a 23 point that we'd never even seen before. No idea where he came from. So, I mean, that goes to show you, you've got deer out there that. You got cameras up, you're not going to see them all. You don't see every deer. No, the you're not until that time of season. Whenever the end of October starts getting there is when it trail camera gets interesting because yes. different bucks show up and he may only stop by one time. And, and you're seeing like, deer and you're like, who is this? You know, you can't be there at all times. Obviously, we work a full-time job, so we can't hunt every single day like that. That was my, my issue last year. I had one that he was probably pushing 160. He's one of the biggest bucks I've seen out on that property at all. And he was regular, like, I even took a day off work. And I think he would have came in, but I ended up, I got to, I made a rookie mistake. I got out there and I was in the truck. I'm like, oh, I'll wait about five more minutes, you know. And I'll get out there and drink coffee. I woke up about an hour and a half later with daylight shining through the windshield. Oh, man. And he was on camera at my spot, 20 yards, you know, 20 yards in front of my stand. I was disappointed in myself, but I made that rookie mistake, which you're going to make sometimes. We got the biggest buck we've ever had on camera. This is, you know, right back here behind us where my wife's going to hunt. But we watched him all summer, didn't we? We'd fly the drone up, you know, out here, the kids playing stuff. We'd fly the drone up, just fly it around. And, you know, we found him by accident the first time, then we flew it up and found him a second time. and. You know, we've watched him grow since back in July when we first found him. But he's the biggest buck I think we've ever seen. Big, heavy mass and everything. Well, hopefully he sticks around because that would be a great second buck for her. Yeah. Jimmy's got some nice deer over there this year. I mean, he's got some bigger deer. Oh, yeah, than he's, got, he's so, got some big so ones. <laughs> I feel like if, it, if it's going to happen, i got to take somebody that ain't ever killed a deer before, which my wife has never killed a deer. So if I have her with me, or coat with me, which is gonna be his second deer. The big one's gonna come out. Man, what and it I is. feel really bad if I go by myself and he comes out because I ain't watching him walk away. I mean, I'll be working. I know there was doing work that night. Those, those care, some of them pictures you had, man. There's some nice bucks. <laughs> yeah. There's and that one that was at night looked like a, I was really focusing. I was really looking at some of those. The uh, the main beam at the end, it looked different. Than that one you had during the day. The is it the same? It might have been the angle. Yeah, I think it's the same. It, it made me fit the He's the same. I only have two. Like, if he's got two that big in the same area. And no, I mean, a lot of guys wouldn't shoot those deer. Talk about won't shoot four year old deer, but they're crazy. Man, I, mean, so I, ain't, I ain't that point yet. I mean, I the well, deer we like used to, up. you know, in this part of the, the country, we used to be lucky to see even a three year old because we've got so many road hunters out here, you know. So many road hunters, out of state hunters. Oh, yeah. Oklahoma is a very pushed down state on its deer. Mm hmm. Except for to Texas. Oh, yeah. And they come up here. 
I have well, many of buddies from Texas that come up if here. If you've been hunt. watching the lease prices the last couple of years, they've skyrocketed because Texas is coming up here leasing all of our our leases out. And, and we got the medical marijuana that happened, and yep. they started buying a lot of land. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the leased, uh, the able to be leased land that was farmland and stuff, now they, they won't lease it to you. No. And that's where them big deer go. Oh, yeah. Deer no. I mean, deer, deer aren't, the deer are not stupid. Oh, absolutely not. And, and that's like, Jimmy, you said like the four and a half, a lot of people won't shoot them. I know a lot of people that won't shoot until they're six, six, seven. Yeah. I got, you some, know? I got some neighbors that they like to wait till at least five. Yeah. And I mean, I don't blame them. Well, but I mean, that's, it you depends can do it. On, if you want to do that, you do it. Yeah. But you're going to have other people that don't. You got neighbors that are going to get your deer. But yeah, I you don't know, discriminate on shooting three and a half. If it, I mean, if it was, we want to rock it, man, just rock it. Man. You, you get it because it's legal to do so. And you can't keep people from doing that. You have, we ain't got no right to govern what your neighbor does. Yeah. You can't be mad at them. Cause and if you're shoot, on a smaller portion of property, you got to You got to take what you got. Like, you can't be mad because your neighbor shoots a deer, though. It's yep. like, oh, man, you should have let him go another year. You, you so, can be uh, upset so about it, but. Uh, what do you mean? You're trying yeah. to just say that that's your deer? So we yeah. don't have a right at him at any time? That don't make no sense. You can't govern people over the deer. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If they want to shoot that deer, they can shoot the deer. Whatever yeah. deer they want, that's what they want to shoot. Mm -hmm. Whatever makes you happy is what, a trophy. Whatever yeah, got I'm people thinking that. that that's wrong, it, it, you're wrong. Yeah. You ain't no different than anybody else in this country. Yep. Trying to govern somebody over what they can shoot, what you can't. I'm not telling you to shoot everything you want. I can carry less with you shoot as long as you're happy. That's what I, I told my wife about her little three point. I was like, you know, if you'd have waited, you'd got this. And then she was, well, I shouldn't have. But at the same time, I, she was shaking. She had buck fever over that. She had a one and a half year old in front of her and she was shaking. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you the truth. There's a lot of guys that won't t say they don't, but I shoot a doe and I, I'll, I'll sometimes oh, be yeah. shaking. Oh, uh, yeah. As soon as I make it, the decision up to shoot the deer, I'm done tore up. Yeah, tore I'm, up. I'm tore up inside and I'll keep them shaking. But as soon up, as I know I made it, like, even if I don't know I made a good shot, once I release that arrow, I'm like, whoo, you know, I'm getting happy. I haven't even sat with with her. I, I, I set her out like I feel like I wish I would have. Yeah. Just by myself. Like, look, you're going to be the coolest, calmest. You're not going to be asking me, like, should I or should I not or what should I mm -hmm. do? You're just going to learn the way I think you should. Like, go by your instincts. And she did. And I sent her out in a ground blind and with a crossbow. And yeah. I was walking back. She don't walk She don't walk in the dark. She don't mess with the dark yet. She ain't, she ain't, she ain't messing with it. So, uh... I'm coming up there, and next thing I need, you know, I hear, there's a deer out there. So I'm walking, I'm, you know, getting closer to her spot. I don't want to push the deer away, you know. Last, you know, 10 minutes of light. Because I got down early from my spot. I had shot at a coyote. So I was going towards her stuff, and she's like, there's deer. I'm like, well, pick one. Pick the biggest doe. Uh, does what? And she does. And like, pick the biggest one, take her out. You yeah. Know? Go for it, you know. And, uh, whack. Okay, was that you? And then nothing. And she wasn't replying. I'm like, man, what happened? Like, I'm now I'm like, crap, did she shoot herself in the foot? Like, is she freaking out? <laughs> you know? Did she get shaky, you know? So, uh, I'm sitting like, message, message, message. Finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm walking to her, you know, period. Just in yep. case. Because, I mean, things can happen, you know? Oh, yeah. So, I'm getting over there closer, and then I get a ding, ding, ding. I guess one of us didn't have signals. So, I get over there, and she's just shaking, boy. She just... I think I got it. I think I got it. Go it. Blood. Found it not. And this looks good, you know. And uh, that's the first time I actually seen her walk in the dark by herself. I said, I'll stay right here. You go back over there and get get something back up to the truck down the trail. And she came back and hopped on a four wheeler. You know, that's what she went to get the four wheeler. Because I was like, you know, we're right here. I'll kind of check this blood out and walk some. And I had already almost walked up to her though. And she got, got her doe, we got pictures of that thing, but for right first on. deer, I mean, she did it all by herself. She hit a perfect shot. I mean, it was, it was perfect. It was, man, she, I, she couldn't have done any better. Ran maybe 25 yards. Oh, that's awesome. Piled that's kind of like the crossbow thing, piled man. Piled up next to the trail. If you ain't comfortable right away shooting compounds, yeah. man, you'll mess up a lot like I did. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. I, I, didn't use, I couldn't use a crossbow. 
I my started trying to count them. It wasn't legal. Crossbow. Yep. You had to have yep. had had a disability permit. Yeah. And I couldn't use a crossbow, so I was this. So I did a lot of missing. Right. Oh, yeah. A lot of missing. I mean, the first deer I ever killed with a bow, I think it was a 36 pound button buck. And I gut shot it at that. Mm. So then we, it was still alive when we found it. Yeah. And I had to shoot had it to. again. I mean, I was a kid, went through yeah. all of that right out the gate. So some of the worst Sometimes of the worst that can happen good, to though. you happen to yeah. you right out the gate, especially on a little deer. Had it been a giant deer, you. you don't get chances like that at big deer. No. But hey, man, I was yeah, 17 years old. Hey, when first, I shot my very first deer. My first archery buck was with a crossbow. And it was a 70 yard shot. But he was a big buck and I said, I'm gonna try it. I don't think I can hit him, but I'm gonna try it. And when I shot, I heard the whack. He fell, stood up and ran and then fell again. I didn't mount him because his tines weren't that long, but for a first, for first archery buck. buck. I mean, especially archery buck. Really Why do you it? shoot little things like that? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll put a picture of him up because I haven't showed this one before, but we'll put a picture yeah. of him up. We won't show them all. Definitely not all. I don't want you to see all my stuff. <laughs> what the? I love it. I can see it. That's God awesome. bless America. Amer America. 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 Might be someone's birthday. <laughs> Pull it up. Which part? God bless America. Yeah, we right. won't. <laughs> Fireworks went off. Hope shoot some more. Yeah, but next year I'd like to do that. I'd like to go down that public but ground see, and see if we can get them multiple, fair. There's multiple yeah. parts to that, so we have to look at where we're we at yeah. on that part because oh, it is open for bear hunting. Ain't hey, Honobi the one you got to pay forty or sixty dollars? No, this this is different than that. Was that a Washita or something? This one is almost borderline <coughs> national forest. Can you hunt hunt bear in national forest? I don't know. I know you can, but this, usually deer hunting. But this one is open to bear hunting when it opens, same as statewide season. And, oh, yeah. and on department managed lands as this, yeah. it's legal to bake, but you can't have grain, which tells me we can use donut syrup, we can use maple syrup, we could use anything, anything sweet. sweet. I'm gonna anything tell you right now, it's sweet you know and got a scent to it. All a lot of the pictures that we got of bears, we didn't even have bear bait out. You know what we had out? Deer corn. And they laid in it all day long eating deer corn. Mm -hmm. Can't feed corn, so that tells me yeah, if you, you put something it. sweet out there, as long as it don't have grain in it, it is legal. That's why hey, you can bait salt. Uh, you know some of this, this stuff called Lucky Buck. I like to yeah. use this Lucky Buck mineral stuff. Hey, that's legal on public land. You know. All right, guys. So as you can see, we're just a bunch of ordinary guys, like to kind of BS and hoping to show you all a little bit of hunting videos this year and uh, we're just enjoying the, the fire now it's kind of cooled off a bit. We're making s'mores now. Yeah. yeah we're gonna make some s'mores now. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in to watch us. Keep watching we're gonna bring videos to you. Right now we've got them scheduled every Wednesday and Sunday at five o'clock so tune in subscribe hit that bell icon like the video leave us a comment we love it. Thank you all. Thank you. Share the videos.